Have you heard about something called ChatGPT? It's an AI tool that is basically blowing up the marketing world right now. And so today, I want to give you an introduction to what this tool is and how it can help you free up your time and simplify your marketing. I'm also going to share with you a way to learn how to use the tool in a fun challenge that I'm running this month. AI is going to blow your mind. Let's get started. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench, and welcome to the My Digital Farmer Podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it, too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer Podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 205 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I am your host, Corinna Bench, one of the farmers at Shared Legacy Farms out in Elmore, Ohio. I'm also the founder of MyDigitalFarmer.com, which is all about trying to help other farmers like you get more confident and more savvy in your marketing and sales strategy so that you can grow a profitable business so you can make money. (laughs) How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the show. Big shout out to all of my regular listeners and subscribers. And if you aren't a subscriber yet, why not? I want to encourage you, hit that subscribe button. Um, If you're new to the podcast, I'm really glad that you're here today. Make sure that you uh, go and check out my very first 10 episodes, especially if you're kind of new to the marketing space and you want to learn the lingo and understand kind of the 101 rules of marketing. I designed those first episodes to really be a foundational series. Another great way that you can learn more about marketing is to get onto my email list. When you subscribe at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe, easy to remember, I have a three month long nurture email sequence. It's basically like a training that's going to walk you through week by week the most important things you need to know if you want to learn how to do marketing well. So I've kind of curated the best of the best of my resources, my podcast episodes, other resources that are out there. I give away freebies, Canva templates. I have so many farmers tell me that it's absolutely awesome. So go check it out at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe. Today's podcast is sponsored by my friends at Local Line. Now you can connect all of your favorite marketing and sales apps with your local line account. QuickBooks, Facebook, Gmail, MailChimp, you name it. My friends at Local Line, the leading commerce platform for farmers, food hubs, and markets, now offer seamless workflow automation using Zapier. Save tons of time on administrative tasks and get more efficient in your sales and marketing. You can take actions like create QuickBooks online invoices from new local line orders. You can add all new customers created on local line to your MailChimp subscriber list. You can update records in Airtable when new orders are created on local line. Send text reminders to your customers to order using text magic or textedly. You can even trigger automations when a vendor is added to your account. The integrations automatically move information between each app seamlessly so that you can focus on your most important work, which is running your business. You guys, I was so excited when this feature was released. In fact, the very next day, I went into Zapier and I connected Local Line with my email service provider. I use ConvertKit. And it has saved me so much time and hassle. I used to have to go into Local Line every week and download the list to see who has been added to my store list who's purchased something as a brand new customer and then make sure that all of those names got onto my email list. And now that just happens automatically behind the scenes. I love it. This exciting new integrations feature is included with every local line subscription from the core level and up. Check out integrations and many more of local lines features. And if you sign up for a local line account using my coupon code MDF2023, you will get a free premium feature for a whole year. 
you can head to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash local line. And don't forget to use my coupon code MDF2023. And now back to the show. So have you been hearing about artificial intelligence lately or specifically chat GPT? I listen to a lot of marketing podcasts and about three months ago, in early 2023, I started hearing all about AI and ChatGPT on like all of the different platforms that I listen to. It seems like every week a different person was featuring the tool and having a guest come on and talk about it and its implications for marketing and how to use it in their marketing. And I have to tell you, I'm kind of a late adopter, which might surprise you. It takes me a while to decide whether I want to jump on board with a new tool or a new platform. Like I still haven't jumped onto TikTok. I still don't think I'm going to. But for whatever reason, the chat GPT tool intrigued me. And I decided that I was going to go and open up a free account and try to just play around with it. And then wouldn't you know it, right after I started doing that, one of my Accelerator members, Glenn, he sent me an email and said, hey, I just discovered this thing called ChatGPT. Have you heard about it yet? And he was using it to find some tagline examples for his website. And he just threw out a few of the suggestions that came back at him. and They were really good. So what is ChatGPT? Let me back up and start from the basics. It's an artificial intelligence language model. Basically, it's a version of Google meets Siri where you can go into this uh, machine learning algorithm site, type in a question into a question box, and it will talk back to you and sound like a human. Now, it doesn't actually speak. It it starts to put the words out onto the page as if it were talking to you that way. So you have to read the response. But the way the words come out on the page, it sounds very human. I would also describe it as very creative and a problem solver. Sometimes based on the questions that I put into the query box, um, I'll get a, a response that sounds a lot like something I might find on Google, right? It just goes out and answers the question. It finds the information for me on the internet. But sometimes it's actually creating original content where it's compiling all of this data that it has found out on the internet and then it puts it together into a creative form of writing to answer my question. So this model is constantly learning and adapting through ongoing training and feedback from the users who are currently using it. So anytime you interact with this tool, that's additional data for it to pull from so that in the future, if it gets asked a similar question, it uses that information to help it know what to say. It's also getting smarter and smarter in its ability to understand context and nuance in language. So it's able to go out and analyze vast amounts of text data and generate highly relevant and coherent responses to a wide range of questions and topics. So I wanted to spend an entire episode today featuring this tool and trying to convince you to give it a shot. My goal with today's episode is to share some examples of how I have used it, some of the ways that it has helped me with my marketing specifically, and I'm hoping that you will want to go and create a free account and spend like 30 minutes just giving it a try. And then you can decide whether you want to move forward with it or not. I believe that after 20 minutes of playing with this tool, you will be sold on it and you will never want to go back. You will realize what a huge time saver this particular tool can be for you. So many farmers are reluctant to work on marketing. I get it because it is time consuming. It involves writing. It involves persuasive, creative writing. 
And that's a lot of work. But if you have a tool like ChatGPT in your back pocket that can help you get started, who can do some of that creative writing for you and sound like a marketer, <laughs> what a great help and asset that would be. So let's get started with how do you find this tool? Where do you even go? So it's a URL address, chat.openai.com. That's what you're going to type into the browser. And you're going to set up an account. For right now, it's free. I suspect that in time, they will make it so that you have to pay for it. There is a paid version. I don't have that one yet. And when you get inside, at the very bottom, there is what looks like a search bar where you can type in your question, any question that you want. So before I give you some examples of questions, there are a few limitations that I wanna make sure you're aware of. These are kind of the, the darker side of ChatGPT right now. Number one, it may occasionally generate incorrect information, and they're very upfront about that. <laughs> As it gets smarter and more and more people use it, it apparently is getting better at that, but we should not be you know, relying on this information to be 100% accurate. So we do need to fact check. Sometimes that's important based on the question you're putting in there. Sometimes it's not really relevant. It may occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content. I'm reading this right now from the page. <laughs> Again, that's because it's taking it's analyzing the data that is out there on the internet. And so if there is a profusion of information on one particular topic that's maybe slanted more in one, one direction, you might pick up on that in the responses that it generates. And finally, it's limited knowledge of the world and events after 2021. So this is not a tool that is able to go back in time, like a time machine, and bring out information from the 90s or bring that context into the room. It's really just pulling from events of 2021 and forward. Now, one of the cool things that it's able to do is remember the chats that you've had in the past. And so it says that it will remember what you have said earlier in the conversation, and it will bring that forward into future conversations, which is nice because it has that context. You don't have to repeat yourself and explain your background. It allows you to correct it. So sometimes I will ask it a question and I don't really like its response or I can say, hey, that's not correct. Or I can say, um, I don't really like that answer. Can you try to tweak it in this way? And it will make that adjustment. And it's also trained to decline inappropriate requests. I've never tried doing that, but just so you know, there are apparently some boundaries that it will not cross. So if you're worried about safety things, something to think about. Now, I have to be honest, before I started working with ChatGPT, I had some resistance to it. So if you are feeling that, I think that's normal. I love watching, well, I love reading dystopia novels. It's one of my favorite genres. And when I first started hearing about what this could do, it reminded me a lot of the movie with Will Smith called I, Robot. I read that book too, by the way, which was a little bit creepy. And I also couldn't help but think of The Matrix, which is also another one of my favorite movie series. My mind immediately goes to this idea of what are we doing building artificial intelligence? And is this a good idea? What if they become so smart that they can outsmart us, right? That my mind goes there. And so if that's something that you've thought of, um, I get that. And yet when I went inside and started to play with it, I was so wowed by its abilities and its quickness and its cleverness and its brilliance that I couldn't help but continue to work with it. So I just bring that up. I think it's normal to feel that. However, I do think that you can just come inside, try to overcome that resistance just to test it out. And my goal with this episode today is that you will be intrigued enough to go and look this tool up and try it for 20 minutes. I think it's going to convince you that you need to use it more often in your lives. So let's go through some scenarios 
that I have used it for just to kind of give you an idea of what's possible. Are you ready? Okay. One of the first things that I tried using it for was to find more creative email subject lines. Do you ever sit down in front of your email and First of all, you just struggle even to know what to write about. I get that. But writing that subject line is really tricky. And the subject line is so important because it's the thing that makes the person decide to open the email. Your open rates depend on your subject lines being awesome. So if, you're so, if your open rates, by the way, with your email marketing are not great, before you think that it's the stuff you wrote inside, maybe you should consider that it could just be you had a bad subject line. Okay, so... I can, I can go into chat GPT and I can type in an example of the subject line I came up with and I can say, give me five more examples of a subject line like this one. And it will spit out five really awesome sounding, curiosity driving subject lines that make me want to open the email. If I don't like the five that it gives me, I have said, give me five more. Or I can say, give me five more like number two. And it will take the second one it had suggested to me that I kind of liked the best out of the five. And it gives me additional ones. It reminds me of when you go to the the eye doctor and they stick you in front of that big machine. And they say, which one is better? The one on the left or the one on the right? A or B, right? It's sort of like that where you tell the machine more like number A and it will shoot out additional options for you. So if you are ever struggling with email subject lines, this is a great way to use it. And what's what's awesome is that the tool does it in like five seconds. It's really fast. So another way you can do this is is just to ask it to give you a subject line. So I had uh, a a promotion for the spring plant sale and I just said, hey, give me some email subject line ideas for a spring plant sale promotion on such and such day. And it gave me a starting point. I didn't necessarily love the first ones that it shot out at me, but then I hadn't done a good job of giving it some background in that query in my in the search box there so it kind of just had to give me a very generic one but then the more we worked together I landed on one that I really liked so that is a huge time saver the second one second idea is if you are a person that writes blog posts or if you write articles let's say for your CSA newsletter you can go into this tool and ask it to write you a creative subject line for that. You can literally copy and paste the entire blog post article into that box and say, please read this article and give me five blog post subject titles. I know. And they're really good, you guys. So yeah, if you have a thousand word blog post, you <laughs> It will read it for you and it will tell you. You could do the same thing with your emails for that matter. You could take the the content of your email, drop it in there and say, read this and tell me what a good subject line would be. It's really powerful. Let's stay on the blog post topic. Let's say that you have to write a blog post. Maybe you want to do a series over the next four weeks. Maybe you want to do a series just in your weekly emails for the next month on the topic of heirloom tomatoes. You could go in and say, give me an outline or outline a blog post that I could write about heirloom tomatoes. I love the outline exercise because what this does is it gives you the different subcategories of a larger topic. And sometimes when I'm creating content, I just need someone to help me break it down into smaller pieces so I can see the bite-sized pieces of content, the smaller messages that I can focus on each week. And so with Heirloom Tomatoes, for example, it might come back and say, well, you could focus on uh, heirlooms versus hybrids. You could talk about the history of heirloom tomatoes. You could talk about 
the different varieties of heirloom tomatoes. You could talk about heirloom tomatoes in cooking. I'm just doing this from memory based on what I remember seeing. And so that right there gave me four, I think there were six different things in the outline, but four to six different topics that I could focus on each week in my newsletter article if I wanted to write an article about heirloom tomatoes or if I wanted to do a big focus feature on that for the month of August. Um, Or if I actually am writing a blog post, it just helps me see, oh, that's how I could potentially break it down. And maybe I'm not interested in one of the five topics and I would just leave that one out because I just don't want to research that and that's fine. This is going to blow your mind. You can even ask ChatGPT to write the blog post for you. Oh, yes. After you ask it to outline, you can say, write me this blog post and see what it comes up with. Now, I don't recommend that you take ChatGPT's version word for word, copy and paste it and stick it into your blog. But I do think it's a great starting point. And maybe you go in and you delete a few sentences or you change a few things or you add a little story or you delete one section. Imagine how much time this could save you as a writer. Today's episode is sponsored by my CSA Membership Academy, your ready-to-go online content source to help your CSA members thrive. Get your first month for only a dollar when you use my coupon code TRIAL. Visit mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash academy to get started. When you join my CSA Membership Academy, you'll gain access to six modules of my CSA Farms curated selection of member support resources, how to cheat sheets and guides, what to teach those CSA first years, cooking templates for all the basic meal formulas, my video cooking tutorials, ready for you to use and implement whenever you need them, as long as your subscription in the Academy is active. Each lesson contains either a PDF guide, an infographic, a video, a cheat sheet, or a recipe collection. And as a member of the Academy, you can use them as a jumping off point to make your own educational content to help your CSA members get the most out of their season. Get your first month for only a dollar when you use the coupon code TRIAL, T-R-I-A-L. To learn more, visit mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash academy to get started. And now back to the show. I hope you're seeing the possibilities here. So whatever your area of expertise is, whatever your product is that you are trying to get people to buy, like what are the potential topics that you could be focusing on here as you try to get people to warm up to your product. If you sell grass-fed beef, oh, this is really good. Let me go look this one up because I am actually inside of ChatGPT right now. And I went up and I typed in, what would be a good topic to write about grass-fed beef? What are people looking for? That is literally what I typed into the search bar and it gave me five different things. Let me skim these. I'm going to read some of them to you just to give you an idea of what it says. Here are some potential topics that could be of interest to your audience. Number one, the health benefits of grass-fed beef. Grass-fed beef is believed to be healthier than conventionally raised beef because it contains more omega-3 fatty acids, which are important for heart health. You could discuss this in more detail, citing scientific studies to back up your claims. Number two, the environmental impact of grass-fed beef. Grass-fed beef is more environmentally sustainable because it is produced without the use of hormones and antibiotics, and the animals are raised on natural pasture. You could discuss the impact of grass-fed beef production on soil health, water conservation, and greenhouse gas emissions. Number three, the taste and quality of grass-fed beef. Many people believe that grass-fed beef tastes better than conventionally raised beef. You could explore the reasons behind this, including the different types of grasses that the animals eat and the fact that grass-fed beef tends to be leaner. Number four, the economics of grass-fed beef. While grass-fed beef is generally more expensive, there are reasons why people are willing to pay more for it. You could discuss the economics of grass-fed beef production, including the cost of raising the animals, the prices the farmers can charge for their meat, and the demand for grass-fed beef. And then finally, number five, how to cook grass-fed beef. 
Grass-fed beef requires different cooking techniques than conventionally raised beef because it tends to be leaner and less marbled. You could offer tips and recipes for cooking grass-fed beef to help people get the most out of this healthy and delicious meat. Then it finishes off with this beautiful sentence. Overall, the key to writing a successful article about grass-fed beef is to focus on the benefits that it offers to consumers, the environment, and the animals themselves. By highlighting these benefits, you can help your readers understand why grass-fed beef is a smart choice for anyone who cares about their health, the planet, and the welfare of animals. Okay, so that right there was a goldmine of copywriting. If you are a marketer trying to sell grass-fed beef, the question that I just typed in to the ChatGPT box delivered all kinds of potential use cases for (laughs) where I could put those words and those concepts into my marketing. Those five things that I just talked about, I mean, that could be five different topics that you use in your social media over the next month, maybe every week you are focusing on one of those different things and that is the focus of your content throughout the week on social media. It could be the stuff you put on your website, the health benefits of grass-fed beef, the environmental impact of grass-fed beef, the taste and quality, the economics, how to cook grass-fed beef. Like those are some of the pain points, questions, problems, interests, values of your ideal customer for grass-fed beef. And Seeing those all summarized for you suddenly makes it a whole lot easier for you to know what to even put on your website, what to put in those little icon sections, what to put in the different widgets and pancake stacks as you're stacking up the elements of the message. And just this final kind of word that it gives you to say, hey, you need to focus on the benefits. Talk about the environment. Talk about uh, how you're caring for the animals themselves. And then this phrase at the end, grass-fed beef is a smart choice for anyone who cares about their health, the planet, and the welfare of animals. There's a tagline like hiding in there somewhere. The smart choice for anyone who cares about the health, the planet, and the welfare of animals. It's a little bit long, but it kind of just summarizes it all for you. So I just want to show you what's possible if you throw in a question as generic as what What would be a good topic to write about grass-fed beef? What are people looking for? Something like that. You insert your product. Maybe it's raw honey. Maybe it's uh, lamb, right? Whatever it is you have to sell, see what comes back at you. And this may actually end up helping you create content in all different kinds of places. Okay, the next thing that that ChatGPT can do for you potentially that I've heard other marketers say they're using it for is to write social media posts or to write the hooks for your social media posts. You can go in and literally say, I need a social media post for XYZ topic, or give me a suggestion for a social media post for um, the uses of raw honey. And it will spit out something that sounds like a social media post, like written in that conversational way in the way that social media likes you to sound, right? Not overly promotional, but just very conversational. Now, I don't recommend that you literally copy and paste what chat GPT gives you and stick it onto your social media or put it into your emails. I think that doing that may may sound a little bit disingenuous because it does have a little bit of an AI tone to it, but it at least can get you started. Sometimes when when we're sitting down to write an email or a blog post or an article or a Facebook ad, we just stare at a screen and we don't even know how to begin. Can you relate? And if you just have something to get you going, then you can tweak it and you can change that sentence and make it sound more like you or you can delete that line because it sounds too generic and fluffy and you it, but it could stimulate and spark another idea that makes it even better either way it can it can shave like hours off of your work time okay let me go to another example writing a facebook ad so let's just say you want to write a facebook ad for your grass-fed beef you could literally put that into the into the chat gpt box in fact let me try that right now Write me a Facebook ad for grass-fed beef. 
So I just type that in and we're going to see what it comes up with. So hang on. It's thinking. All right, here it goes. Sure. Here's a sample Facebook, Facebook ad for grass-fed beef. Headline. Upgrade your protein game with grass-fed beef. Body. Are you looking for a protein source that's not only delicious, but also healthy and sustainable? Look no further than grass-fed beef from your company. Our beef is raised on pasture and fed a natural diet of grasses and other forage, resulting in beef that's not only better for you, but also better for the planet. Our grass-fed beef is lower in total fat and saturated fat than conventional beef, and it's higher in beneficial nutrients like omega-3 fatty acids and CLA. Plus, it's free from hormones, antibiotics, and other artificial additives, so you can feel good about what you're putting in your body. At your company name, we're committed to providing the highest quality grass-fed beef products on the market. We work with farmers who share our commitment to sustainability and ethical practices, and we carefully select and age our beef to ensure maximum flavor and tenderness. So why settle for conventional beef when you can upgrade your protein game with grass-fed beef from XYZ Company? Try it today and taste the difference for yourself. The call to action would say, shop now and upgrade your protein game with our grass-fed beef products. Okay, I don't love everything in there. Like, I would probably change the headline a little bit. I would think of some more ideas. But do you see how it's a starting point? And it helps you see the kinds of things that could be in there. And then you can go in and tweak it and change it out and test it. So I'm having an idea right now as I do this podcast. I think this would be really fun. Let's do a chat GPT challenge this month. I'm going to go build it next week, and it will be ready in time for when this podcast drops. You can go and subscribe at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash AI. So you'll get to a subscribe form. You'll subscribe to it, and then you'll get start getting an email every day for five days in a row. And each day, I will have some kind of homework assignment for you. It will be very short. It will be something like go into the ChatGPT bot and ask this question. And you will go do that and you will see what it spits back at you. And then I'll have some ideas in that email of like, here are the implications for what you could do with the responses in a future marketing asset someday. So you won't have to actually go and take the information that you've learned from ChatGPT GPT and do something with it, but it will show you what's possible and it's going to get you inside the tool playing around with it. I think this could be really fun um, and it'll be short and quick and basically uh, a guide through this new tool. So if you're interested, why don't you go subscribe at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash AI and this will just be a new free resource that's out there to encourage farmers to jump into the world of artificial intelligence and play around with it. I think it's got huge potential for helping save time for us in our marketing. Okay, let's dive back into additional use case scenarios. Another thing that you can ask ChatGPT to do for you is write your email. Yeah, you know when you sit down in front of the screen and supposedly have to write your weekly email and you have no idea what to say? You could go and, and ask the AI tool to write this email for you. Now, you can't just say, write me an email to my farm customers because it's not going to know what to say. But you could give it some guidance and tell it to write one of the sections. So if you know that you want to do a quick little informational tidbit about um, why the eggs are different colors from your pastured hens, you could ask it to write a short paragraph about that And then you could use that as kind of the starting point for that section of the newsletter or that section of the email and tweak it so that it sounds like it's in your voice. You could also, like I said earlier, edit an email that you have written. So maybe you have kind of a rough draft, but you think it's too long. 
and you could say, can you please edit this for me and shorten it up? And it will do that for you. I actually have used it for that purpose once before. All right, what else can it do? I'm turning the page here. You can ask it to summarize an article or a transcript. So if you ever listen to a podcast, or if you are a podcaster like me, I could take an entire episode transcript and stick it in there and say, can you write me the show notes of <laughs> this episode? It'd be so cool. I haven't done that yet, but I should. It takes me forever to write the show notes for this show. Um, you could ask it to write recipes for you. If you are a CSA farm and you have these random collection of vegetables that go into your box, you could tell the chat GPT tool, I have these vegetables to work with. Can you please give me three different recipes that use some combination of these, of these vegetables? And there you have it. Rather than searching around for recipes every week for your customers, you could have this tool help you find them in a matter of five minutes, and then you can copy and paste them. Or if you don't like the idea of copy and pasting them, you can at least get the ideas and then go find those kinds of recipes somewhere else on the internet. I remember I did that actually with the tomatoes. Uh, I was asking, what are some five, give me five common or popular recipes to use with heirloom tomatoes. And it shot out things like bruschetta, salsa, right? It gave me the categories. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about bruschetta. And I kind of wrote that down. Another thing this tool can do is it can give you tagline ideas. If you're looking for a better tagline for your website, ask it. Ask it to help you out. Give me a great tagline for a grass-fed beef farm. Just go type that in and see what happens. That might be one of my questions in the five-day challenge that we're going to do in a few weeks. You could ask it for t-shirt ideas. I actually did this because every year I stress out about what my farm swag t-shirt should look like. I can't think of a cool theme. I can usually get a good design once I have the concept or the, the words or the phrase that I want on there, but finding that phrase is so, so hard. I just have to make a decision. And so I went in and I asked it for some, some clever suggestions for a foodie farm t-shirt. And I ended up choosing, there were like two or three that I really liked. I think the one I chose was I stand, I stand with farmers is one of the ones that came back. And I'm like, oh, what if it said I stand with my farmer? So that's what I've sent off to my designer to play around with. And we're going to see what comes back. But that unlocked me. I didn't have to scour the t-shirt sites and Google images and try to find ideas for what can be on a shirt. So that's a really easy way to do it. Customer research is another topic that I have used this for. So you could ask a question like, what does a grass-fed beef customer care about? Or what does a grass-fed beef customer worry about? <laughs> and this is going to help you see the kinds of values that matter to them, the kinds of questions that they're asking, the way that you would use that response that comes back at you because you can even say, hey, I want you to, to give me five, five different things you could specify. Um, and then when the list comes back with the short explanation, there's some copywriting for you to use to help you build out the about page of your website or even, frankly, the home page of your website when you're building out the, the problem section or the, outli the outlining the, the icons or the benefits of your product. You'll know what are the words that my customer is already using in their heads because ChatGPT went out and found them and compiled them for you and put this in the response. When you read the response, you will see, you will see the language, right? Like when I was looking up stuff about CSAs, like I, I was seeing the phrase, they want to know where their food comes from, like that phrase. And that I know that that phrase is out there. I know that's a huge buzzword for my clients. So when ChatGPT says it to me, I'm like, oh, yeah okay, he's here, it, or whatever is, <laughs> is out there, and it's, it's catching up on that language, and it's sharing that with me. So when you do these customer research questions, it helps you identify what are the phrases, the words, the concepts that I could be talking about more on my website, on my social media, for that matter, 
on a regular basis? What are those content pillars that will draw in and attract my ideal customer? Um, so I also have written down lead magnet topic ideas. If you have not built a lead magnet to get people to subscribe to your list, you could go in and ask it. What would be a great lead magnet for uh, a person who uh, likes raw honey? Give me five suggestions. And you can start from there. See what it comes back with. Whatever your main product is that you're trying to sell at the end of your sales funnel, choose that. Um, and let's see, what else do I have here? FAQs. FAQs. So there are certain common questions that your customers have about your product. This is also a way of doing customer research. You could ask ChatGBT to tell you what those are. What are common questions that people have about this product before they're ready to buy it? And it will tell you what common FAQs are. And then you can use those answers to write, help you write your FAQ page for your website or the section, your FAQ section on your homepage of your website. Or you can use the different questions to spark your social media posts. Maybe you have one day a week where you focus on one of the top four FAQs that come up again and again for your clients. Like for me, it's where are your pickup sites. <laughs> um, but it could also be, um, what does it mean to be organic? That could be a topic that you just repeatedly talk about every now and then, right? So once you know what they are, because you've done that research, you just make sure it's in your messaging cycle. ChatGPT can help you identify what many of them are. Sometimes some of them aren't even on your radar. Now, if this is intriguing to you and you want to see a demo of this, sign up for my AI challenge, my ChatGPT challenge at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash AI. And I will make sure that in the first email, I have a demo video of me showing you some of the things that I put into this tool, some of the questions I put into the tool, and you can actually see the responses generating. If that's all that you wanna get out of that challenge where you just watch that 15 minute video and see what's possible, awesome. But if you're kind of intrigued at the idea of having fun with me and every day going in and doing a little quick query um, as I coach you to do, go put this question in there and see what happens. And you just kind of want to see what's possible. If that sounds kind of fun, then I encourage you to sign up. So go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash AI. I'm super excited about this now. I just thought of this idea as we were doing the podcast together. And um, I'll be able to throw that together real quick. And I think it'll be easy, fast, and wildly helpful for you. Okay, your first step though is to go and sign up for a free account. You've got to do that. And that's going to take you five minutes. But after that, it is so, so easy, especially if you sign up for the challenge. So go to chat.openai.com. That's where, where it lives. And just sign up for the free account. It might be busy. Like, I think there's a lot of people that are trying to log in right now and join. So if you get this message, it's like, well, we don't have capacity right now. Then just come back the next day. Try again. Um, it does eventually open up again as they make more spaces. Well, today's show notes can be found at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 205. If you like today's episode, or if you just had your mind blown, <laughs> please go leave me a rating or a review. I'm trying to collect 75 reviews this year. If you've enjoyed the show at all, it would be so meaningful to me. Just head over to Apple Podcasts, scroll down past all the episodes, and there's a section there that says leave a review. You can just tap five stars, or you can actually write out a sentence or two to tell me exactly what you like. That helps me kind of know how I'm adding value to the world. It gives me some feedback. Or if that's too hard for you, just go tell somebody about today's message. Like if you're, if I just rocked your world with AI, or if you go watch that demo that I talked about, um, that shows what ChatGPT can do, you need to send someone to this specific episode of the podcast so they can hear about it. And so just share the link with someone, another farmer that you know. Now, if you want to get on my email list, remember I have some awesome free stuff to send you to make your marketing even stronger and guide you through the marketing jungle. So just go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe to grab that. If you want to continue conversation with some of your peers, you can find my Facebook group called the CSA Marketing Discussion Group. And don't forget, I'm now on Instagram at My Digital Farmer. I show up there several times a week with a mindset coaching moment or a little marketing tip or case study to help you keep track 
of your business. I'd love to connect with you there. So thanks for joining me today. Have an awesome week, everyone. Go try AI. It's pretty cool. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.